Hello everyone. So actually I want to talk about two things today. I want to talk about um, just another practice example with the trigonometric functions on the coordinates. So on the 0, on the 90, on the 180, on the 270. And then I also want to talk about something from example 3 from this section, which is about reference angles. So here we see a you know, 90 degree angle. We're going to evaluate our trigonometric functions. So just as we did with, you know, if we were given the point 3, 4, we're going to use sine as y over r, so our y value there is 1. Our radius is 1 because we're talking about our unit circle. Our cosine is x over r, our x is 0, our r is 1. And it just kind of checks for us. Our tangent value is our y over x, and that'll always be no matter what the radius is, so our y value is 1. And our x value is 0, which, as we know, we can't divide by 0, so our tangent at 90 degrees is undefined. Our cosecant, essentially our sine flipped, our radius is 1, and our y value is also 1, so 1 over 1 is 1. Our secant, our radius, over our x value, so 1 over 0, which we see is undefined. And our cotangent is x over y, so our x value is 0, our y value is 1. It does help if you draw yourself a little unit circle. You don't have to if you can just visualize what it is. Uh, so just, like I said, an example again with our coordinates. Now I want to talk about reference angles. So reference angles are kind of strange, but they do help us. So we won't always just be asked for what's the sine of 30, what's the sine of 60, what's the sine of 45, and all the other values with our angles in our first quadrant. Sometimes we'll be asked to use the reference angle to find the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, etc. of angles that are in quadrants 2, 3, and 4. Now for some of you, you may just like the mathematical version, the you know 180 minus the theta or theta minus 180, 360 minus theta. I like to think about it as how much until 180 or pi, how much past 180 or pi, and then how much until 360 or 2 pi. The reason we don't have to worry about reference angles in our first quadrant is because we already are an acute angle. So our reference angle is itself. It doesn't need a reference angle. We can find the sine of 30 without having to think of what angle that relates to in our unit circle. So in order to find what these acute angles are, let's just practice a couple. And I'll kind of leave that up as a visual. So find the reference angle for A, theta, equals negative 165, and b, theta equals 7 pi over 4. So we're going to do 1 in degrees and 1 in radians. So I have a negative angle. Typically it's not the easiest to work with a negative angle, so let's figure out what the coterminal is. So if I do negative 165 plus 360 to find its coterminal angle, we are coterminal with 195. That is going to be easier to work with. So if I just do a little sketch, I know 195, since this is 180, that's going to be 195. So since this is 180, how much past 180 have we gone? And that's going to be 15 degrees. So our reference angle is 15 degrees for negative 165. So any values of sine, cosine, tangent, etc. of 15 degrees with some slight modifications that we'll talk about in class, would be the same as for 195. Now let's take a look at our other angle, our radians, 7 pi over 4. So once you get comfortable with it, you'll kind of automatically know where 7 pi over 4 is, but until then you can think to yourself, okay, is it more or less than 1 pi? Well, I see I have 7 over 4, so it's more than 1 pi. Am I more or less than 2 pi? Well, I'm slightly less than 2 pi. If it was 8 pi over 4, I would be at 2 pi. So it looks like 
I'm just shy of 2 pi. And how many pi would I have to add to get to 8 pi over 4? Well, 7 plus 1 would be 8, so my reference angle would be pi over 4 which we also know is 45 degrees. So any values of sine, cosine, tangent, etc. of 45 degrees, again with some slight modifications which we'll talk about in class, will have the same values for 7 pi over 4. This is going to be very useful because instead of memorizing your entire unit circle, you're going to be able to just use the trig hand drive with the slight modifications we'll talk about in class to evaluate any trigonometric function for any angle that uses those as reference angles, which is what we're going to focus on.